What's up, Simonics? Welcome to a quick win on upgrading your Ionic application to Ionic version 5. So, if you haven't heard about it, Ionic 5 was released and you actually don't have to fear this migration because it's nothing like the previous changes from Ionic 1 to 2 or 3 or from 2 or 3 to 4. From version 4 to 5, the most things are actually UI related and since Ionic is already based on web components, a lot of the other things happen in the background. Still, there are a few breaking changes and I want to walk you through what you can do to upgrade your Ionic application. So, if your app is already on Ionic 4, I first of all recommend to upgrade to the latest version of Ionic 4, which you can do by installing it with this syntax. This should install the latest Ionic 4 version. And why do we do this? Because Ionic also introduced deprecation warnings. So when you uh, surf your Ionic application and check the developer console with Ionic 4, you will actually notice that there might be some deprecation warnings, especially for CSS utilities and the events API. We will get to this in a second. But the idea is that you should actually fix these upfront before going to Ionic 5. So go ahead with this step first and then once you're done with the deprecation warnings, you can install Ionic 5 by installing the latest Ionic Angular package and also the Ionic Angular toolkit in the latest version. This will then update your application and in a lot of cases, you can actually immediately still run your project and shouldn't see big issues. But of course, this depends on the size of your project. So let's now go through the few breaking changes that you have to work on. First of all, the CSS utilities. If you previously had something in your Ionic app like this, you're using padding, you're using a text center, padding left, any of these utilities directly on the components, they are completely removed. And that's also the, the deprecation warning you should have seen with Ionic 4. In order to fix this, uh, you need to convert all of them to this new syntax. Basically, they are now CSS rule and you append ion slash before them. So padding becomes ion padding, text center becomes ion text center, padding left becomes uh, and of course, not just for these three, but all the utilities that you might have used in your application. This is just a move to standardize things. Um, this was initially created with Angular in mind, and now that Ionic is available basically for every framework, uh, they moved to this, which now works better. So I initially wanted to create a, a little script on this because I thought it should be possible and I'm still sure it is possible to do this automatically because uh, this was actually the task that took the most time in my projects. So perhaps if you're good with a scripting language, you can extract them and create this uh, snippet from it. But the problem is sometimes you might already have a class attribute on an element. So then you just need to cut these things and append it to the class. But I'm sure it is possible with some sort of script. So if you created something, please share it with the community below. I'm sure it would help a lot of people. Now, once you are done with this, let's move on to the next thing that is really deprecated and that's the events API. As well, for this one, you should have seen a deprecation warning with Ionic 4. And the, the easiest way to upgrade this is actually to move into uh, a logic using RxJS subjects. Here's a quick snippet. So uh, let's imagine you have a card and you want to increase or decrease a count. Normally, you might have used the events API and called a publish new event and everyone listening to this event could react. Now, the easy fix would be to have in your service some sort of subject, for example, a behavior subject on which you simply emit a new value calling next. Now, everyone who's subscribed to this subject as an observable would get this change and could react to it. So it's really uh, the just the transformation from the events to the subject in the most easiest way. If you have more complex logic, of course, uh, using some sort of state management might also be required. As well, I will publish a post on this hopefully in about one or two weeks uh, where I will show you this change in detail as well. Another small breaking change is related to the toast controller. So previously you were allowed to use show close button and close button text for a little close button on the toast. 
This is now removed. So what you need to do is simply use a buttons array inside of the toast like this. This is just like the standard you used to from other overlays as well. So not really a huge change. If your app is using a menu and now you can be happy if you're using tabs because the tabs weren't changed. Um, you also need to do a slightly small change. So previously, uh, oops, I don't want to do this. Can I go? I don't know how to go back on my <laughs> uh, document. So uh, previously you might have had just the main attribute on the ion router outlet. This now needs to be changed. So uh, if you're using a split pane, you use the content ID on the split plane. And if you're just using the menu, you can also just uh, use it on the menu. But the content ID here, and thanks Simon, I did it again, needs to be the same like here. So really just a small change, I guess it's just in one of your template files, just make sure that the content ID for split pane and menu is set. And here we got just ID. And of course this is wrong as well. So if it is main, you should use main here and main here. So all the three values should be the same. Uh, this is just false and I need to correct this. Now, another breaking change that I think won't affect a lot of you is uh, the ion nuff element. I had a, a post on this in the past and basically these three elements were completely removed in favor of using an ion nav link. Now the idea is to use on the ion nav link a direction because push is forward, back is back and set root is just about setting the root. You can see this I think in my uh, multi-level menu with ion uh, nav. So let's check out the code um, as an example. Uh, here we go, I actually added to this tutorial already the code. With Ionic 4, it would have looked like Ionnav push. So you want to push a component, which is the next page and perhaps some properties. This would now be just an Ionnav link with the router direction forward. Still component, component props, just the same. As I said, I don't really think a lot of you are using the Ionnav since the documentation was and still is not really good but um, it is a small change that you have to apply. So if you're using the nav push, nav uh, back inside of your code, uh, you need to get rid of them and change them to ion nav links with the router direction set. Now, in terms of CSS variables, um, there were actually a lot of classes added, some were renamed, and of course it's hard to tell which of them are used by your application. So let me uh, close what we've been through. And then um, you can check out this document about the breaking changes in which you will see uh, everything that we talked about here plus some additional things. For example, here you can see this rename to this. So a lot of variables on different components were either renamed, removed or added. And I would just recommend to check out which of these components is used in your application, then check it out. Like perhaps you're using a card. Um, is there any change to your card in terms of CSS? No, not really. So move on. Um, as I said, not all of them were changed, but you will occasionally across this document find uh, variables that were now changed. So if you're using them and wonder why your application isn't looking like before, this is the reason. So uh, next step is Ionicons. Uh, with Ionic 5, we also have a brand new version of the Ionicons. Uh, you can check out the blog post on the official Ionic blog. They're pretty awesome and they now come in three different modes. Outline, Fill, Sharp. Um, by default, I think the fill will be used and Outline and Sharp are just the specific values. This is not really a breaking change itself. It is actually an addition because uh, you can now set on the ion icon directly which icon should be used for iOS and Android. Previously, this was magically done in the background. So now you can define this yourself. But at the same time, there were also some breaking changes. Um, and I linked to this, I think, in my quick win, which you can, of course, find below the video. And the problem is that some icons, well, quite a few were renamed or deleted. So if some icons in your app are not showing up, it is because most likely they were either renamed or uh, removed. So check out the updated changelog to 
also update all of your icons. Otherwise, you don't have to install anything or patch anything. Uh, with the latest installation of the Ionic package, you should get the new Ionicons as well. Now, another thing that I would recommend is while you're at uh, this update process, you should also move to Angular 9. This update from most likely Angular 7 or 8 in your application isn't going uh, to be really hard. First of all, you can use the schematics with ng update to update the CLI and the Angular core, which will then update most of the things automatically in your project. I also recommend that you do this step after you're finished with the actual Ionic 5 migration. So also when you run this command, uh, you might get an error because you haven't committed your changes. So simply finish everything to Ionic 5 first of all, commit and add all the files and then move into the Angular migration. There's also a page which shows uh, nicely from whatever version you're coming to Angular 9, what needs to be done. But basically most of this happens automatically due to the schematic. The only thing that's really important is that the um, entry components were removed. So these were now obsolete. Um, I'm not sure if the update schematic will update this or not but that's one of the breaking changes. The other are pretty small. Also, once you're done with this, you might see a lot of errors in your project, which are related to the new uh, compile in the background. So previously, when you were uh, running your build in the end with Ionic build prod or something like this, you get, would get some TypeScript errors that you haven't seen before. These errors or warnings are a real thing that you need to fix. And now this step also already happens while running Ionic Surf. So the compiler will do the checking that we previously only had when doing a production build while building your application. So that is actually good news because there will be no surprise once you do your final build. In the past, I had this a lot of times that um, once I do the final build, I get a lot of warnings that some things were not defined, some functions were not found and things like this. And this will actually help to remove and um, fix everything already while developing and not just only at the end when you just want to build your final application. So that is the idea uh, of the migration to Ionic 9. You can find everything once again, all the news about cool new UI features on the official Ionic blog as well. There were a lot of UI changes, especially for iOS, some for Android as well. Um, some cool new elements were introduced like this new list behavior or the, the iOS header behavior. We will definitely have a post on Ionic animations anytime soon. There was also a new gesture controller. But today I only wanted to show you the breaking changes of Ionic. If you encounter any other uh, problems while upgrading your app to Ionic 5, just let me know below the video. And otherwise, I hope the transition will be smooth for you. It will take, of course, a few hours to fix the things we talked about, but it won't be the, uh, the migration you had in the past. So don't fear this upgrade. Go for it. You will have smaller bundle sizes. You will have a better UI. Um, you get a lot of new uh, features and functionalities, so I highly recommend you upgrade to Ionic 5 as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and stay subscribed so you get notified about all the new tutorials, quick wins, and other app development and web development videos on this channel. If you want to learn more about Ionic with in-depth courses, a community of like-minded developers so you can learn and build your apps faster, you should definitely check out the Ionic Academy, which is my code school to help you with everything Ionic with a huge library of courses, material, and a supportive Slack channel so we can get your app out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you inside the next video. Have a great day and happy coding. Simon.